Hello everybody and welcome back to a brand new video. We just hit 47.4k subscribers. Let's get to 50k by election day. Please like this video down below and subscribe to the channel. But before we get started, I have to tell you guys about my friends over at My Patriot Supply. Are you ready for what the future brings? Every day the news headlines get worse. Civil unrest, the second wave of COVID-19, economic collapse, massive suffering, not to mention what Mother Nature will do. Hurricanes, earthquakes, floods, wildfires, it's all there. The question is, will you be prepared? If you don't already have an adequate supply of long-term emergency food, it's like driving around without wearing your seatbelt, thinking you'll have time to put it on right before an accident. I urge you to build your emergency food supply now because there is no time to waste. And as always, my highest recommendation goes to the company I personally trust and use, and you can too. It's My Patriot Supply, the go-to experts in emergency preparedness. Their mission is your survival. And right now, they're knocking off $100 off their four-week supply of delicious, nutritious food that's specially packaged to last up to 25 years. So make sure you don't pass this up. I believe that everyone has a personal responsibility to have at least four weeks' worth of emergency food supply on hand at all times. And you can order yours within a matter of minutes. Just go to preparewithreadygill.com. That is preparewithreadeagle.com. And we have some new data to fact check today. And there was this individual from Target Insights, or Target Smarter, one of those uh, garbage election mafia firms, that came out with this data point here. New registrants since July 1st, 2020, saying this is good news for Democrats. Democrats are up in voter registration in terms of new registration in every single state except Florida. And Democrats were gloating about this on Twitter, saying Blumpf is over. Democrats are going to register enough voters to the point where a massive blue wave comes around and Blumpf will be finished. However, is this entirely the case? Should we actually be going by new registrations to determine what the outcome of the election will be? Because is this data entirely accurate? Well, for one, it depends on the state. For example, the state of Michigan, we do not track voter registration. So they are estimating what it would be like from where the area's people are registering, what would exactly they look like. And a lot of what it's showing you here is that a lot more in the Democrat areas, but there's still a massive gap and nobody knows what the hell is in the middle. The states that actually track registration like Georgia, Iowa, North Carolina, Pennsylvania, those states show it relatively neck and neck. So you can see it's not really that big of a deal. But keep in mind this tracks new registrants. It does not track net registrants. For example, people switching parties over to vote for the Republicans in some of these states will make all the difference. For example, Republicans are gaining a lot more registrations in Pennsylvania. If you look at the map here, all of these counties here, every county almost for the past week, except Philadelphia, which actually was registering more Republicans in like the past couple of months or so, Delaware and Montgomery, every other county is registering more Republicans than Democrats net. That's what the voter registration is trending in the state of Pennsylvania. And yes, this does count voters who voted for Trump who are registered Democrats. They will be voting under the registered Republican ticket this time around. Yes, they are included in the data set here. And you can see this being the case in many counties across the state of Pennsylvania, uh, even Bucks County, Bucks County significantly trending Republican. A lot of that is because Bucks is more of a working class suburb. Yes, you do have upscale areas in Bucks. You also have a lot of working class areas, a lot of the working class Irish immigrants to Philadelphia. They're eventually moving up into Bucks County. And they're kind of keeping it red, similar to what you see in Macomb County in Michigan, why Macomb trended red despite it being a massive suburb of Detroit. It's kind of a theme here in the middle American suburbs, for example, even though like Cincinnati, Hamilton County's trending blue, there's a lot of the suburbs of Cincinnati that are actually trending red. You see a similar pattern here in Michigan with Macomb County doing the same thing. Bucks County is another county as well as suburban Pittsburgh. Some of these suburban and exurban counties around Allegheny, these are trending more and more Republican in Erie County in particular, a massive shift over the past week into the Republican column. So you look at what's going on in Pennsylvania, it's showing that more people are becoming Republicans. Obviously, people are not necessarily so active and they go out there and they register as a Republican, whether they were a Democrat or unaffiliated before or whatever. So this is a kind of a misleading graph right here. And if you want to 
know why the graph is so misleading in the Democrat column? It's because they always gain with new voters. New voters are people, they turn 18, they go to get their driver's license, they get their voter registration. So let them believe that they're winning because a bunch of degenerates who smoke weed all day and who don't exactly know what the hell voting is turned 18 and decided to go with the Democrats because it's socially acceptable. A lot of these people aren't going to vote at the end of the day. Donald Trump could lose the election. Yeah, I don't think he's going to win by a landslide by all means. I get a lot of comments saying he will. No, it's going to be a close election and we can't get complacent about it. You got to register to vote. You got to go vote. But um, this is going to be a close election either way. If Donald Trump does lose the election, it's not going to be because Democrats are registering more new voters. If you look at this in 2016, the same Target Smart, Tom Boner of Target Smart here, um, now was analyzing this back in 2016. And Democrats had a 13-point lead with newly registered voters back in 2016. So the fact that Donald Trump is ahead in Florida, the fact that he's just barely behind in some states like Pennsylvania, North Carolina... Because if I look at this chart here, North Carolina trended blue by 9% back in um, 2016. So Donald Trump is actually doing better in terms of younger voter registration significantly during this cycle in terms of the percentages. And the fact that Florida has a massive Trump lead among newly registered voters, that means that Donald Trump is probably going to win the state of Florida. There's a reason why that both campaigns are are kind of ignoring the state of Florida during this election cycle. The fact that Georgia is remotely close is very, very encouraging because a lot of people move from the north to the south and they kind of bring their voting ways with them. The fact that Trump and Biden are neck and neck in Georgia, very good. Same thing with Iowa. Of course, a lot of the younger voters in Iowa probably will skew them. But the fact that it's a dogfight right now in Iowa, the fact it's a dogfight right now in Georgia is good news. And the fact that it's just neck and neck in North Carolina is a very, very good sign. Now, people are going to say, what about Michigan? What about Minnesota? These are states that Trump is competing in. Why is he so far behind? Again, a lot of the target smart data is extrapolated from a system that somehow analyzes zip codes of where people are registering. It's not always the most accurate, and you still have a lot of independence. We don't know exactly which way those people would go in the selection cycle because the actual voter file shows that Donald Trump is in a very good shape. It shows Republicans are up five in Wisconsin. In the voter files I've seen, Republicans are up in Wisconsin. They're making significant gains in Michigan. They're making significant gains in Minnesota, as well as the state of Pennsylvania. A lot of the polls don't exactly show what's going on right now. A lot of the numbers we see in the polls right now could just be chalked up to made-up estimations. Maybe they will set the record straight come late October and start to narrow the polls. But other than that, I don't believe that Trump is down by seven points in Michigan at all. He might be down by two. He's not down by seven for sure. A lot of the polling data we've seen, it's all over the place. And you look at the cross tabs in one poll, the cross tabs of another poll, they just don't make sense. The only place where the polls are really tightening out to be what they really will be is in Florida. And you see this. Trump is making gains in Florida. Registrations are up. Even newly registered voters, which skew younger, are up significantly. And a lot of this comes from Miami-Dade County. There was an internal poll today out of, I think it was Florida's 27th, Donna Shalala's district, an internal poll from the Republican side that had her losing. Do I think she's going to lose? I don't know. I don't think so. But the bottom line is Republicans are making significant gains in Miami-Dade County. And a lot of it does come from Hispanics. A lot of it does come from Cuban voters that maybe have voted for Hillary Clinton in 2016, but also voted for Marco Rubio. Donald Trump could win Florida by two to three percentage points. Florida is always going to be a close state. I do know that. I do recognize it. But I do think that Trump has the edge in Florida and the polling data is starting to reflect it. Same thing with North Carolina, although we've seen a lot of iffy polling in North Carolina. It's been all over the place. I'd uh, really like to see some more polling data out of North Carolina. But a lot of the data we've seen looks fairly good. As for Virginia, as for Colorado, I don't really care what happens there. Republicans are not going to win Colorado. They're not going to win Virginia. This election is going to come down to the Rust Belt. It's going to come down to Arizona. Nevada, uh, it's a questionable one. The newly registered voters are leaning Democrat, but they're not leaning Democrat that much. And if you want to look at where Nevada was back in 2016, right here it says that it was 20.4 points into the advantage of the Democrats. So the fact that that has slowed down and it's now 7% is very good news. And again, Target Smart's not necessarily the best data firm here. Uh, they don't go by the standard voter file. They try to extrapolate data, and they kind of have some sort of bias from what I can tell from what I've heard against the president. That's why their CEO and founder 
tweeted out this graph here saying, great news for Democrats. No, it's not really great news for Democrats, and that's why I'm here to fact check it. Because the fact that they're losing or close to tied in most of the competitive swing states is a very, very bad sign, especially because these are newly registered voters. And even by the guy's own article, they are trailing far behind 2016, especially in places like North Carolina. Um, Georgia, they're even trailing behind in Georgia, North Carolina, Florida. Um, I believe Florida. I don't think they mentioned Florida in this article here. They did mention Virginia. Virginia was actually 39 points in the Democrat column. That's actually slowed down. So if anything, we're seeing lower registrations for the youth vote in all of the voting registrations we've seen here. Here's Pennsylvania. I showed you Pennsylvania. Take a look at North Carolina. Kind of a misleading map because two counties are like really blue, so it kind of skews it by percentage. But overall, like only like three or four counties in the state since 2016 have trended blue. And this is since January. Since the end of 2016, it's actually gotten a lot more redder than this. So again, a misleading graph from a misleading election mafia organization, when you look at it, when you analyze it correctly, kind of shows that Republicans are doing pretty good, even in some states that they really aren't expected to win. So interesting data we have here. Polls don't tell the whole story. You have to look at registration data like 538 used to look at before it didn't fit their narrative anymore. And you have to look at donations, small donations. In the state of Minnesota alone, Hillary was beating Trump 5 to 1 in donations. Now it's a statistical tie. So Donald Trump is doing a lot better than what a lot of the polls are showing. Can he win? We got to get out and vote. Don't get complacent. It's not going to be a landslide if you sit there and comment on my videos. It's going to be a landslide. No, it's going to be a, a landslide, as much of a landslide as it can be if you get out and vote. So make sure you register, make sure you vote, preferably vote in person, preferably early in person or in person on election day. If you're over 18, make sure you are registered to vote. So anyways, guys, thanks for watching this video. Please like this video down below, comment down below, and subscribe to the channel. Hit the bell for notifications so you never miss another video. Follow me on social media, become a member, donate to the Patreon or subscribe, star links in description. As always, guys, thanks for watching. Red Eagle, out.